Hey, teacher friends. I'm Kelsey from My Teacher Mommy, and I am so excited to be here with you today. It is my passion to help teachers and make their lives easier. So I hope I'm able to do that for you today by teaching you about this five-step process to science and social studies research units. So one major problem with teaching in the United States right now is the lack of emphasis on science and social studies. There are so many testing requirements for math and language arts that we often find it hard to find the time for science and social studies. The thing is, these subjects are so important and we need to make sure that we are teaching these to our students. But how do we fit it all in? It can be really overwhelming sometimes to get to everything. So the solution is to simplify and cut down on planning time and engage students in meaningful self-guided learning with research. Now we have refined this process into our five steps and this will make it so much easier for you to plan these units. But there is a process, like I said, um, that's why it's super important to follow the five steps because you can't just throw students into research. I remember as a child just staring at a blank page, having no clue what to do with it. It can be super daunting to try to research when you have not developed those critical skills on how to research. And it can be very overwhelming as a teacher to get kids actually motivated when they have no clue what they're doing. So that is why um, your role as a teacher is a guide to help your students build those critical research skills. So then they can take those skills and discover information about any science or social studies topic on their own using these skills that they have learned from you. So today I'm going to start by sharing the first research unit that I ever created. And this is what I use to refine that five step research process. And that is my animals and habitats research unit. So as a student teacher, this was kind of my light bulb moment. We all have that at some point when we are teaching, when we discover something that we did that just really worked. And this was that moment for me. I had been with this third grade classroom from the very beginning of the school year. This was the second half of the school year where I had completely taken over the class. And I did this unit and I had never in my entire time in that year seeing the class so engaged. It was the first time I had seen every student engaged. You know, we all have those students who seem to struggle more with focusing for whatever reason, whether it be they have problems at home or they have their own, you know, health issues or mental health issues. You know, we just have those kids who focusing is not their strong suit. Um, but during this, every student was engaged, even those troubling students. And one in particular, who just totally melted my heart, came up to me one day and he was like, when do I get to work on my animal journal? You guys, this child had never been interested in very much, but now all of a sudden he was engaged and excited to learn. And why is that? We're going to talk about that a little bit. This is the time that I learned that self-guided learning is one of the most engaging ways to teach children. So when kids have autonomy in their own learning with guidance from their teacher, they thrive, you know, because they don't want to just sit and listen to a teacher the whole time. They want to be engaged in their own learning. And this is one way that we can do that. Because, you know, even as adults, we like to have choices in what we do, right? Our kids are the exact same way. So let's give them some choices. Let's give them some autonomy and allow them to discover things on their own. And that's what we're going to do here. So the five-step process um, that we use for our research units is number one, we model research skills. So this is where you will be um, strategically teaching these explicitly, okay? You will be up at the front of the class, you'll be telling them how to use these different things to research, right? How to use the internet, how to use books, what how to use the table of contents, et cetera. And we'll talk a little bit more about that. Number two is the research journal. So this is the part where students are actively doing their research. You'll be there as a guide to help them as they do this research in their journals. Um, step three is the written report. This is where they will take what they did in their journal and put it all together into one written report. 
Number four is a hands-on final project. So the final project has the two parts, right? The written report is part of it, but then we also like them to do something hands-on and fun and engaging that uses their um, creative thinking as well. Um, so this could be a lot of different things. We'll talk a little bit more about this. And then number five, show it off. You know, kids love to show what they learned um, and what they've done and just feel proud of themselves. And I really do think this is a very important step. So without further ado, let's dig in a little bit further into these five steps. So, number, so step one is model research skills. Now there are two main places that your kids will be doing their research books and the internet. Um, so for books, you might take the kids to the school library, show them how to find um, books on their topic um, and where to find them in the library. You might talk to them about the table of contents and the index and that these are the places they'll most likely be able to find um, the information that they're looking for. We have that Venn diagram you can see in the picture where students can compare and contrast the difference between the table of contents and the index. Um, then with the internet, you're going to want to talk about credible sources. How do you know that this website that you found this information on is credible? You'll want to talk about that. We have lesson plans um, that lay this out for you so you can do that very simply and talk about how students can, you know, find credible sources. We also have a blog post on our website, so be sure to check that out. Um, then also how to search on the internet safely. So in that download, you'll also have a list of um, search engines that are safe for kids. Um, we don't want them just going to Google because you never know what they can find there. So make sure that they are searching the internet safely. Step two is the research journal. Now this is where the students are finally digging in and doing their research. Now our signature way of doing this is to focus on one question per day. And here's why. So think about yourself. When you have a to-do list, and I'm just gonna talk about me, okay? So when I have a to-do list, and I have like 20 things on my to-do list, I look at that to-do list, and I'm like, oh my goodness, how am I gonna do this? How am I gonna get all of this done? And I get super overwhelmed, and I get anxiety. Um, but if I'm just like, okay, I'm gonna focus on this today, and I'm gonna get that done, then I'm much more able to get things done. It's the exact same thing for our kids. Um, we don't want them to feel overwhelmed with everything they need to research. So this is why focusing on one question per day um, was super manageable. Um, and that's why it's been such a success. So when they focus on just one question, it keeps them from that overwhelmed. And then through the course of the unit, they will get all the information that they need. You can also use the research journals to have the students research a topic as a whole first and then dig in even deeper. So for example, in the animals and habitats research unit, from the get-go, each kid or each group can be assigned a habitat. So for example, they're assigned the ocean, right? And they're researching some questions about the ocean, and then at a certain point, you let them pick an animal in the ocean that they then start researching about that animal within the habitat. When I did this, I had small groups. So the group was researching, say the ocean, for example, and then each kid within the group would pick a different animal to research. Um, and they got to pick, because remember, um, students love choices, right? So they got to pick which animal within the habitat that they wanted, and then that allowed them to dig in even deeper into that specific animal. So some more about the questions you can ask in the research journal. Um, we like to start with activating background knowledge. So what do you know about animals and habitats? Um, this just gets their brains engaged. Then you can start asking questions like, what does the habitat look like? What animals are in it? The other thing we like to have in the research journal, because like we said, we like to focus on one question a day, but as students research, they might you know, find other fun facts in the process. So that's why we have an interesting facts page as well. So while they're digging in, they can write anything else they find on that page. Um, so it's not just, they can still record it, they can still report about it, but then they're making sure they still get their daily question answered. Step three is the written report. So this is, this is when they will take what they have done in their journals and put it all together in a written report. The journal makes it super nice because it makes it easier for them to put it together into paragraphs about different topics because everything's already on its own page. 
Um, so the, the research journal can kind of be seen as a draft, and then the written report is like the polished report. Um, depending on the grade level or how much time you have or just, you know, how much of the writing process you want to go through, you can have that written report just be the final draft, or you can do several drafts of that written report. Step four is the final project. So this should be something fun and hands-on that has to do with the topic. So for the animals and habitats, we did the habitat in a shoebox. So they'd make the whole surroundings, they'd put all the animals in there, they would have the plants, you know, so basically just the whole habitat that you can see right there. Um, some other examples are for um, science and social studies, obviously, that's what all these are. <laughs> um, for the planets, um, they could do a paper mache version of their planet. Or for um, dinosaurs, they could do salt dough fossils of the dinosaur. Um, for penguins, this one I love because the students could take the average size of whatever penguin they are um, researching and make a life-size model of their penguin using butcher paper. Um, another one I love for um, women's history or any sort of history, you could do this for black history as well. Um, make a poster of that person. So like, draw that person and then write some of the awesome traits about that person around them. So like they are considerate, they are motivated, they did this amazing thing. Um, and you could do that just on a piece of paper or they can make a large poster, you know. It's up to you and up to your students. So step five, show it off. This is, you know, it gives students a sense of pride when they're able to show off their hard work. Um, so they can present their final projects and they can kind of even do a presentation, if you like, to the class about what they've learned. You could even do like a fair or a museum where you can invite parents or other classes to come see their final projects that they did. So like if they did the Habitat in the Box, other classes or parents could come and see it. Um, this may not, you know, with COVID, this may not work this year, but it is something that is a lot of fun if and when you're able to do it. <laughs> Okay, so let's go over those steps again. So first we model those research skills. We teach them how to use the library, how to find books, the table contents, the index, find incredible sources, where to find, how to search on the internet, all those things you're going to explicitly teach them. Number two is the research journal. This is where they focus on one question per day and make their way through the unit where they will eventually get all the information that they need. Step three is taking that information from the research journal and writing a written report. Step number four is that hands-on, fun, and engaging final project, such as a habitat in a shoebox or a paper mache planet, etc. Number five is to show it off. So some science topics we've used this process with are solar systems, landforms, extreme weather and natural disasters, dinosaurs, penguins, volcanoes, life cycles, you could do this with so many different topics, whatever you need to cover that year with your class. Um, and then this is supposed to say social studies. So more topics you can use, such as ancient civilizations, author study, black history, scientists and inventors, women's history, United States, United States presidents, and any other topic that you need to cover. So through this five-step process, they're not only learning that topic that they're currently researching about, but they're also developing those critical research skills that they can use to learn about anything they want. These are skills they'll use the rest of their lives. The other great thing about this five-step process is it's also distance learning and digital friendly. So you see here with the animals and habitats unit, we have a Google Slides version. Students can do research on the internet. So if you even have like you could do the printable and the digital versions. So you could like, you know, be doing the printable research journals, but then if you have to transition to distance learning, you could switch to the Google Slides, or you could just do the Google Slides in your classroom. It's really up to you. There are just options for doing these research units, um, which, you know, if you have, if kids have to go home and they're distance learning, this is something they can do while they're at home. They can research on the internet and then they can fill out their journals online. Um, it doesn't necessarily need to use paper. 
Okay, so next, get planning your first or next research unit using our free research starter kit. You can download that and it'll help you get started because it'll help you with modeling those skills that your kids need to get started with their research project. So all you need to do is enter your email to download that. It's totally free. Um, so you'll definitely want to grab that. And then if you want to have all your planning done, if you don't want to just get started, but you're like, um, no, Kelsey, just plan that for me, okay? Um, you can get our highly rated, already done research units. So we have them in a variety of science and social studies topics on our website at wifeteachermommy.com. And then if you purchase one of our research unit bundles, you'll get all the future units for free of that same type and subject. So there are nine different options because you can get um, science only, social studies only, or science and social studies. And then all three of those topics come in three different formats. So we have printable only, digital only, or printable and digital. So whatever subject and type you pick, you will get all the future ones of that. Um, so there are a total of nine different options. Okay, that is it for today. But if you want to learn more or connect with me, I would love to connect with you. So download the free resources that we have available. These will help you get started with your research units. And for more blog posts and resources on this topic, be sure to visit our website at wifeteachermommy.com. We have blog posts about um, helping students find credible sources, et cetera, that will help you get started with this. Um, you can also connect with us in our Wife Teacher Mommies Unite group on Facebook and on Instagram at Wife Teacher Mommy. So thanks so much for joining me today. I hope you've learned from this presentation about how you can use research units in your classroom. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us at hello at wifeteachermommy.com. And thanks so much for joining us today.